Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 9 for April the 28th, 2019. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Call to Ministry. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled A Job to Do. The devotional reading comes out of the book of Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 12 through 17. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20 and also from Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 and we'll be studying today from the adult quarterly from the Gospel of Matthew uh, chapter 28 verses 16 through 20 and then uh, from the book of Acts uh, chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 our lesson aims today, number one, is to compare and contrast Jesus' commission to the apostles on the mountain in Galilee um, with his commission on Mount Olivet. Um, that's Matthew 28 and also uh, Acts chapter 1. Secondly, take courage that Jesus is present with his disciples as they go into the world to make disciples. And then thirdly, to accept the commission to make disciples of all peoples. Uh, we have two outlines today that will be a part of our discussion. Uh, the first outline is entitled, The Commission for the Call. And then the second outline is entitled, The uh, Control for the Call. And I certainly thank and praise God for being able to share yet another lesson with you today taken from our Sunday School Quarterly and also as we reflect upon uh, last week uh, on the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, we deal with today uh, an aspect of uh, ministry uh, as relate to our various types of calls. Uh, back in lesson uh, five uh, from March the 31st we talked about um, different types of calling and, and our uh, passage uh, at that time was taken from um, Matthew chapter 4 uh, verses 12 through 22 and I want to revisit that just a little bit because uh, I think that uh, we all have heard the term uh, being called into ministry, but it should be understood that um, there are various uses of the term call or calling uh, in the Old and the, t in the New Testament. Uh, there are some five different uh, expressions, if you will. The first type is an invitation. Uh, the second could be a summons. The third, as we're dealing with in our uh, lesson text, is a commission it could be naming uh, or even to pray so we want to make sure that we uh, just share with you a little bit about the basic types of calls and it's incumbent upon us to understand uh, when we say that we have been called that we are able to qualify what that means uh, but we highlighted that the basic call is to Christ uh, as Lord and Savior and so all Christians are the called ones. So uh, as we look at this uh, lesson today, uh, let us be clear that Jesus is commissioning uh, his disciples and as we get to the book of Acts, his apostles, those who were witnesses of his life, uh, of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Uh, would be uh, able to go and to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ but I uh, just want to make those points uh, so we can understand we have quite a bit that we want to share with you today various aspects of this lesson there's a lot of depth here uh, but in the biblical context for our lesson quarterly I want to read just a bit of this Matthew's account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ includes 
fewer details than the accounts of Luke and John, yet he is the only one who gives us detailed accounts of the soldier's report and the full formula of the ordinance of, of baptism. I want to stop right there because we uh, want to make sure that we understand a, a couple of the sacraments that are used in the church. One would be uh, baptism and the other would be the Lord's Supper. And sacri sacrament uh, is a Latin term uh, meaning sacred. And so you want to keep those things in mind because this is a part of the commission as Jesus lays out for his own, his disciples, to, to go forth um, being commissioned to undertake these things. And so uh, from the lesson standard, the biblical context uh, on Matthew, uh, this lesson uh, presents two accounts of Jesus giving his disciples instructions for continuing his ministry in his absence. The first from Matthew 28 comes immediately after the passage from uh, last week's study. That passage recounted events surrounding the uh, resurrection of Jesus and the resurrection itself. So all of that took place in and near Jerusalem. And so a change in geographical context, context is introduced. However, by the transition noted in Matthew 28 uh, and 16, which opens today's lesson. And then our lesson context for the book of Acts. The second account comes from the book of Acts. This book is Luke's record of the history of the first century church. A vital part of what preceding the founding uh, of the church you can see that in Acts chapter 2 was a commission or charge given to the apostles before uh, Jesus ascension near Bethany you can see that in Luke chapter 24 verses uh, 50 and 51 and I also want to make mention before we get to our first outline uh, it's a little bit of a, a probe or question if you will uh, what do we understand about our roles uh, today as a church, as the believers, the uh, body of Christ? And it's very important that, that we follow uh, the mandate given to us by uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And those of you all who know me, uh, evangelism is a very um, huge part of uh, the ministry that I have undertaken uh, and I, I'm very passionate about that because um, as we are learning in our lesson text today it's the final instructions that Jesus gives his disciples uh, on the path that they should undertake going forward and uh, it's very important that we uh, if we are wanting to uh, need to qualify the things that we do in ministry make sure it's in context uh, with the biblical mandate and so uh, the lack of our adherence uh, to the instructions of Jesus is a sign of limited interpretation of the New Testament church uh, and our interpretation of the Bible as a whole uh, so this is uh, as I said earlier this is Old and New Testament um, in terms of evangelism and so we just have to understand what we are looking for and how we can uh, participate in, in the, the last instructions, uh, the last will and testament, if you will, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we want to get into uh, this first outline entitled, The Commission for the Call. This is taken from Matthew uh, chapter 28 uh, verses 16 through 20 and I want to read this from the NIV uh, translation then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go and when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted verse 18 then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
so we can see the uh, the ones that uh, have been chosen uh, and uh, are now being commissioned and, and it should be noted these individuals these the 11 have gone through the process of salvation they have gone through the basic call uh, if you will uh, as a disciple they have learned and become students uh, of everything that Jesus wanted them to know so they would have some understanding of what is expected of them going forward and so we see here uh, but there's still some that are worshiping him uh, in verse 17 but some are doubting uh, we, we don't have a lot uh, to uh, run to as it were in scripture as to why these individual disciples were doubting but we do know uh, it is a part of, of life it is a part of uh, ministry experience that sometimes doubt uh, uh, exists with us uh, we're not sure uh, and this is uh, specific to various types of calling sometimes we, we are doubting because we're not sure of uh, perhaps what the Lord wants us to do when to do it and how to do it that could be a source of doubt uh, if we are accurate, accurately qualified to do ministry that would also render doubt uh, within the believer um, leaving our comfort zones uh, to uh, undertake ministries could also uh, be a source of doubt there are many things that could have affected uh, and even when we began to look at opposition and uh, rejection and things like that it, sometimes that can be a source of doubting uh, not sure if uh, these things should be happening to us as believers but uh, we can answer all of these questions biblically if we can understand what we are looking at but this is the posture uh, some of these disciples are trying to worship and uh, and doubt uh, we saw that in John's gospel uh, with Thomas uh, who uh, expressed that he would not believe unless he had uh, put his hands on Jesus and put his hands in his wound and, and uh, been able to uh, 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 in a carnal way satisfy the doubts that he had and so uh, when we go back in scripture we see Jesus came to him um, and allowed him to uh, uh, fulfill those uh, requests that he had uh, concerning Jesus that 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 were uh, prerequisites if you will uh, if he were to believe and so Jesus accommodated that um, in the uh, 20th chapter of the book of, of uh, John but Jesus uh, specifically told him not to go on unbelieving but believing and so in ministry uh, as we face doubts we ought to be certain about what the Lord is giving us to do uh, and how he wants us to uh, perform these various tasks and all of these are revealed to us uh, via the Holy Spirit we'll see that a little bit later on in our passages today but uh, Jesus reminds them in verse 18 that he has all of the authority uh, in heaven and on earth and so that that is the basis of God's will uh, it's based on his authority and we see uh, the will here uh, in this text uh, God has a, uh, a sovereign will we were sharing this with uh, evangelism students uh, to help them understand God has a sovereign will and then he has a permissive will this is a sovereign will here in verse 18 all authority uh, uh, God has the power and the authority uh, Jesus has received this uh, and so he lets them know that it's been given to him and so now he says therefore he sets the table for the therefore this is the conclusion to me having the authority in heaven and in earth and all the power that I'm commanding you I'm the authority commissioning you I'm the authority that is guiding you and uh, and relaying to you what my expectations 
of your life and ministry and service will look like he has that authority so we 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 need to understand that that uh, it's incumbent upon us to obey God has the authority to guide us to 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 lead us to where he wants us to go so he says go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them this is one of the sacraments that I lifted earlier baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit uh, this uh, Trinitarian teaching here uh, Jesus is giving that to them uh, but there's a lot in uh, this passage of scripture that is not answered for us and we'll talk about that as we go along uh, but verse 20 he says teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you what things would those be uh, that they would need to teach and so we're going to look at that uh, in Acts uh, chapter 2 I believe we will go there uh, in just a bit and so but Jesus reminds them that this is not a suggestion uh, he has the authority so he can make commands uh, and he can make demands of our lives uh, and so uh, this course change from the very first day that Jesus called them into the basic call of, of, of salvation and making and equipping them to be disciples they have grown with him to a point where he is still uh, 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 exercising authority in their lives and, and now moving the call in a commission that they can go forward now but he doesn't say where to go he doesn't say when to go we don't know uh, at least from this passage what things would they need to teach others as they go so this is kind of limited here but we're going to answer those questions when we go to the book of Acts but so the disciples minus Judas uh, Iscariot who is dead by suicide you can see that in Matthew 27 5 and also Acts chapter 1 verses 16 through 18 would eventually head to the meeting place quite likely it is on the rocky hill surrounding the Sea of Galilee uh, where they had met before with Jesus uh, there are discussions as to whether or not this is the place of Jesus ascension uh, we don't know for sure but Matthew does not make that connection uh, but when the disciples saw Jesus the record is that they worshiped him while some doubted so we're not sure if they murmured questioned, or had a mild argument but Matthew makes clear that there was worshiping and doubting among the eleven men so uh, but what is clear here in the context they were not supposed to sit idly and watch and wait for things to unfold Jesus charged them as he charges us to go to get to moving additionally Jesus sent with uh, purpose so we should seek uh, to disciple others in the work and ways of the Lord um, discipleship calls for teaching and training going along with others in preparation for God's call on their lives we have to move forward uh, in a doctrinal way in a spiritual way in a learning way if we're going to be effective uh, uh, as uh, disciples of Jesus Christ this is not uh, and I know we're looking at 11 men here uh, soon to be 12 after uh, they select another to take Judas Iscariot's place but this is a corporate mandate for the church all of us as believers should be engaged in some type of evangelistic effort uh, to move us into expanding the kingdom of our God uh, by means of discipling people teaching them training them uh, uh, winning that confession unto salvation uh, that the Bible teaches us to do so this confession of faith requires a recognition of the full divinity of Jesus thus acknowledging him as Lord uh, the second component for us in discipling others is to teach we are to teach everything uh, Jesus has commanded us to do 
which is to live and to love. But I want to go to Acts chapter 2 uh, before we leave this passage of Scripture because Peter, uh, in his sermon, uh, at least for me, breaks down uh, some essentials as to the doctrine or the messages uh, that we should uh, engage in teaching others. But in Acts chapter 2, if you go down to verse 36, uh, the Bible says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38, then Peter said, repent and let every one of you uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. So we have in uh, verse 38 of Acts chapter 2 some things that we should engage in teaching others. We have repentance. We have, and, and all of this is doctrine. Uh, we have baptism, which we shared earlier, for the remission of sins. Uh, we can talk about, uh, engage in teaching individuals about the, uh, the, the, the nature of sin, not so much the individual types of sin that we commit, but the very nature of our hearts and of our minds uh, that need transforming. I also want you to look at uh, Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 7. We'll also tell you a little bit more about the types of manifestations of sins. And then he says, uh, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now we have more doctrinal information from Matthew 28 as to the type of things that uh, Jesus is expecting um, his disciples to engage in terms of teaching others. And, and we have to do that. Uh, our culture today needs to understand what repentance is all about, being godly sorry uh, for your nature, for your sinful nature, uh, needing to be baptized. This doesn't save the individual, but it identifies the, the, the individual convert uh, in, the, in terms of a public uh, display, an outward show of, a, of an inward change. Uh, the water baptism does not save, uh, but it sends a signal that we are identifying uh, with the burial of Christ, going down into uh, the water symbolizing the grave and then uh, fully submerged uh, and then being raised uh, from the water symbolic to Jesus being raised from the dead. So all of these things have relevance for us in terms of teaching others um, but in Matthew 28 it's not shared but if we continue reading and searching these things out uh, these are all principles that Jesus disciples after uh, going through the process of salvation they would have known so they're not adding anything to the sal the salvation uh, process, but they are uh, incorporating uh, their doctrine uh, of salvation in an individual manner, as we just laid out in Acts chapter two, uh, coupled with their experience in these areas. So uh, the people that we send out, that 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 God will send out into ministry, uh, should have experience with that resurrection. Uh, with that manifestation uh, 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 of, uh, of Christ in their life being raised from the dead. So in turn, we should be living a new life uh, 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 in, in, a, in a way that uh, the world can see that, that we have met and we have encountered or we have experienced the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I hope you can understand uh, Jesus is setting the tone here uh, not just where he wants the disciples but where they should be in ministry we won't have time today but I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 5 
Uh, it also helps us to understand uh, that we should be eating meat now. In other words, those uh, uh, principles that are laid out in Acts chapter 2 uh, during Peter's sermon, uh, we should have mastered these things. We should have matured in these areas of repentance and baptism and laying on of hands and these other things that the book of Hebrews chapter 5 will help us to understand and also I want you to take a look at Hebrews chapter 6 because there is a danger of not growing not maturing uh, in the body of Christ and so we want to be able to see this and sometimes as individual church members and as a church uh, body we're not moving in the in the areas uh, where God would have us to be we're not growing and the book of Hebrews tells us that that's a danger that's an area of concern so I just want us to understand that all of us should have uh, accepted the basic call of following Jesus Christ in other words that we've given our lives to Christ and have entered into this this calling this process unto salvation unto discipling uh, where the Holy Spirit can move us over the course of time to a commission uh, you, you will not you will never be commissioned without going through the basic process because you will have no message you will have no experience uh, and so you will only be able to lead your hearers to the extent that you have gone I want us to keep that in mind so in our quarterly here there's a question if you know and truly believe that Jesus is for us and and with us why do we not do our jobs of carrying out the Great Commission list answers and possible solutions so again this is some areas where we could have uh, we're not sure uh, we don't understand the type of call uh, perhaps God is calling your name and you think that he means this but it's actually that uh, but we must answer these questions uh, uh, individually and also corporately uh, but it does raise some concern uh, in terms of what Jesus wants his believers to be about and we are found not doing that uh, that is something that we really should take a look at and, and, and there really is no excuse for that because if you notice in Matthew 28 and we're going to read uh, a few verses from Acts chapter 1 Jesus leaves no stone unturned he explains specifically of where he wants uh, his disciples to be we get some geographical information when we go to the book of Acts and we won't have time to read all of that but I hope that you will look at uh, Acts chapter 1 in its entirety and also at Acts chapter 2 so as we move to the second uh, outline here entitled the control uh, for the call this is from Acts chapter uh, 1 verses 6 through 8 and again from the uh, NIV translation then they gathered around him and asked Lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel he said to them it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem at home uh, and in all Judea which is about 19 miles away from Jerusalem and then in Samaria which is about I believe about 35 miles or so away from Jerusalem and then to the ends of the earth so we can see this uh, methodical strategy laid out by Jesus of how he wants them to go about uh, uh, ministering but they are not to leave uh, Jerusalem uh, until they have been endued with power uh, from on high and so if we're going to be effective in ministry we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is significant to us uh, in ministry the Holy Spirit is our witness if you look at Romans chapter 8 you'll see exactly uh, what I'm talking about here but they thought uh, the apostles the disciples thought 
that uh, uh, and they asked Lord are you at this time going to restore uh, the kingdom to Israel and so here um, we are not sure uh, what the implication of this is but from what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 uh, verses, verse 28 the disciples thought that he might overthrow the Romans and restore the physical kingdom uh, to Israel but Jesus uh, lets them know it's it's not for them to know uh, but what we do have is the things that uh, Christ does want us to know and what I love about the Lord we have enough information to get busy we have enough information to go forward granted as we serve in ministry we don't have all of the uh, the answers that we may need uh, that uh, may uh, that someone may even ask of us but what we do have is the specific details about how Jesus wants us to strategize our ministry efforts and we should work at home in our family members in our environments there are people in our families uh, who are not saved and, and that's enough ground to keep us busy uh, from now on but uh, Jesus had uh, a strategy a plan of how he wanted to move them um, in and around their hometown and then a little further away from home so that's very important for us to understand and there's no harm in us asking if we don't have uh, answers uh, uh, James puts it this way if any man lacks wisdom uh, let him ask of God uh, uh, but again James says that we should not uh, be wavering and doubting when we're asking God uh, various things uh, we need to be confident and sure even of faith that God will answer he will give us the things that are sufficient for us to know uh, that that will help us move forward so Jesus does not answer them and he tells them it's not for you to know uh, the times or dates that the father has set uh, by his own authority so God will not tell you everything we're not God we're just his people but he does give us sufficient information to move forward verse 8 but you will receive the power this resurrection power the same power that raised Jesus from the dead resides in that believer and that believer has experience uh, I asked the question on resurrection Sunday last week to my Sunday school class how do you know that the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is true how do you know that uh, and some gave various answers and yes we do have to believe that uh, and we do have to uh, accept the, the biblical application for those things but in this verse here Jesus says the Holy Spirit so if if you have been born again if you have the Holy Spirit that is the witness that is how you know that the resurrection has taken place in addition to all the other things that we cited earlier so this resurrection power is essential for us having uh, become acquainted with and having experience with bringing a reality of the resurrection in our lives and so that's very important so um, I believe in John chapter 14 if you will read that uh, you will see more evidence of what I'm sharing with you now and some of the reasons why the world cannot receive uh, what Jesus is saying to them the world has not gone through or has not accepted the messaging of Jesus Christ it has not heeded the call uh, to enter the process unto salvation so uh, if it's not something carnal uh, relating to the flesh something that that is tangible uh, that they can see feel and touch as Thomas was trying to convey the, that he would not engage as a believer until some carnal act took place uh, uh, then we know that those individuals will not have the spiritual components that it required that is required 
for us to be commissioned, to us to minister, for us to really have accurate information as to what we are trying to convey to others. I hope this is making some sense to you today, but it's very important that we have this resurrection power, uh, that we have this going on or actively moving in our lives. So uh, Jesus says in, in, in sort of a a precursor to them ministering or witnessing was that power. Uh, you will receive this power when the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon you and then you will be my witnesses. I hope you can see that. And so we have to have that experience uh, with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a reality. Uh, John in the fourth chapter he said the Father seeketh such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, so we have to have biblical knowledge, but we also need spiritual knowledge. I uh, also want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says to the church at Corinth that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. It is foolishness to him, uh, so he can't understand that. And so if we're going to witness to people, and I've shared this over the years that we can do this in a twofold approach. Number one, we need a message. We definitely need a, a biblical strategy or message or outline that we're going to use in terms of witnessing to others. But you also your life is also a witness. So you have a twofold thing working. You have what you're saying and how you're living. Uh, establishing the fact of who you are doctrinally and being manifest to the world spiritually that you have encountered the Holy Spirit you have encountered the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and your life speaks to what you believe I hope you can understand that so we all have a calling on our lives but what kind of call is it what is the Lord telling us to do with this call and commission Jesus had just finished sharing with his disciples uh, gathered together on the mountain that they would soon receive a baptism uh, of heavenly proportions uh, they had been baptized by water but now the Holy Spirit himself will come and baptize them into full fellowship with God that's how we become members of the church if you will we can join the physical local church but we are baptized into the body of Christ into the mystical body of the church and the Holy Spirit is that agent that ba baptizes us into the very presence into the fellowship of of Jesus Christ and, and of God and that's what the text is saying to us so not grasping what was said as they gathered around Jesus, the disciples asked if it was at this time uh, for Jesus to restore Israel's kingdom. And so we shared that Jesus does not engage in sharing any other information about that. But their call and future ministry work will be guided and controlled. Uh, Romans tells us uh, this, that those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. He is the leader. He is the guider. He is the one that reveals to us what the will of God is. And we must move in that will. Uh, when we go in prayer, we are wanting to, one of the things that we are wanting to uh, come away with is what God's will is for us and for our lives. So uh, by the power uh, they will receive from the Holy Ghost, enabling them to fully witness to the ends of the earth but I like this here uh, what the commentary says they would not be able to work the work required of them without being directed by the Holy Spirit and the reason that the lesson text gives us is that self-direction not only gives room for us to act inappropriately but also will allow us to throw in the towel when things do not go our way how many times do we see that happen today in ministry that we start things we begin different projects and and uh, uh, service in ministry and then subsequently we quit without a legitimate reason uh, and because our flesh strength has run out or we have been rejected or or were not accepted or some other thing negative happened and we just threw in the towel but the Holy Spirit if he guides you 
if he leads you you will not be able to put that service or that act of worship down and so all of us get weak we get frustrated uh, in anything that uh, because this is a work it brings all the uh, all the components along with it in terms of working with individuals uh, in our local churches uh, disputes are, are likely are going to happen but how do we handle that do we just leave the church or do we seek to work um, uh, in being led by the Holy Spirit to do what we what it is that uh, that 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 God has given us to do uh, but we do know from scripture that God is not the author of such confusion so uh, we need the Holy Ghost he is everything to us in ministry and I like what the lesson tells us we will not be able to function in the appropriate fashion uh, without the power of God witnessing to the good news of Christ will and should start at home in Jerusalem as we laid out move to family and friends in Judea and then onward to those who might not like or agree with us representing Samaria and eventually to the rest of the world so the question here in the quarterly is share examples of when you got your faith twisted and your eyes and focus were no longer on Jesus honest conversation will acknowledge that our love for money a person or things can um, cause us to get uh, things twisted I'm also going to give you first Timothy chapter 6 and I'm also going to give you Philippians chapter 2 uh, that you could read at your leisure in terms of being like Christ and doing nothing from selfish ambition this is a very moving and powerful lesson one that we should all engage in individually and corporately and how do you think Christ would feel leaving his last instructions for his believers for his students for his disciples to follow and they are not doing it it's something that we really need to engage uh, to probe our our lives in our churches and make sure that we are following the things that uh, Jesus has given us to do our closing prayer Lord Help us to hold out from selfish thoughts and ambitions and instead to patiently wait on you and the Holy Spirit to guide us through our ministry and our calling. Help us to hear clearly and to serve faithfully, for we all have work to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I challenge you today to get the work for Jesus Christ. Now you know what he has called you to do if you're not saved today give Christ your life give Christ your heart give Christ your mind give him your strength and let him transform you and rewire you that he might subsequently commission you so until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you